So this is an update on my last video that I did on the uh, Studio Mod dinosaur sounds. And I got a lot of, you know, a lot of good responses and uh, a little bit of uh, criticism, but I think it was all, it was all pretty constructive. Um, and I kind of want to go over um, everything and kind of go into more detail on um, what my arguments are. Uh, and I also want to um, correct some things that I said uh, in the last video because I do realize that I maybe simplified a few things and one of the mistakes that I made in the last video uh, was when I said that we have no idea what dinosaurs sound like because that is a bit of hyperbole on my part. Um, we do have some idea of what dinosaurs might have sounded like uh, because we have close relatives that um, still exist today that uh, make sounds, and we know what those sounds sound like. Uh, the closest relatives of dinosaurs are crocodiles. Um, they don't make sounds with a larynx or a syrinx. Um, they make hissing sounds, and they make bellowing sounds by doing these internal vibrations, uh, usually in their throat. Um, and then there's the Indian gharial, which actually has a um, a bulb at the end of its nose that amplifies uh, that kind of bellowing sound. So it actually travels farther, which is interesting. Um, so we do have some idea of what dinosaurs might have sounded like, but we don't know like, exactly because it's kind of like saying, like imagine if all mammals went extinct and we only had bats and rodents. Like, would you be able to take a sound from a rat and, you know, apply it, like, amplify it, and then say, oh, this is what a lion would sound like, you know? It doesn't make, that wouldn't make sense, right? And it's the same issue uh, here with uh, the Studio Mod videos. Um, because, like I said before, um, the sounds that are being used are from birds with the syrinx, which dinosaurs didn't have, and mammals with the sound-producing larynx, which dinosaurs most likely did not have. So to begin, I just kind of want to reiterate what my points were in the original video. Um, my point was not to say that Studio Mod is like scamming people or saying that the sounds he created are real or anything like that. I'm not saying that he was, um, you know, lying to people or anything like that. Um, my issue was that the very wide um, popular opinion about these sounds, because they are very popular, there, there's hundreds of videos um, just on these sounds or shorts. A lot of them have millions of views and people just eat it up. Um, that's more what I was talking about, just this, this very gullible culture online that just kind of wants to believe that these sounds are real, but they're not. Um, they're not real. They're, some of them are maybe a bit realistic, but they're just, they're speculative and they're artistic. Uh, you have to understand that these are, uh, this is comparable to paleo art, actually. Uh, if you look it up, um, it's existed since dinosaurs have been discovered. Um, people speculating on what dinosaurs looked like. And as time has gone on, we have gotten better and better at figuring out what dinosaurs looked like. We're not 100% there. We probably never will be. But, like, we're getting better at it. We have very realistic depictions of dinosaurs now, but they're still not real. That's the very important thing to understand here. Um, and it's the same here. This is... These are artistic representations of what dinosaurs may have sounded like. This is no different from like what Jurassic Park did. Uh, Jurassic Park created all of their dinosaur sounds from taking modern day animal sounds and then altering them or mixing them together to sound really cool and prehistoric and like interesting. Uh, and that's exactly what Studio Mod did here too. A lot of these sounds are from animals that either have a larynx, which is what mammals use to produce sounds, but most vertebrates, like outside of fish, have a larynx that just doesn't 
produce sound except for in mammals. Um, and then there's also the sounds that are taken from animals that have a syrinx, which is what birds have. And this is actually much lower. This is actually where the, uh, the bronchi, whatever you call it, the, the trachea splits apart into the two lungs. And it's, that's how birds are able to produce two different frequencies or two different sounds at once, um, which I actually found really cool. So what Studio Mod says in the original video is that most dinosaurs did not have a syrinx, which is a bit of an understatement because in reality, we're like a, almost 100% sure that no non-avian dinosaurs had a, a syrinx. What non-avian means is uh, dinosaurs outside of birds, basically. Um, the first fossilized syrinx actually uh, I think first appears about 67 million years ago and specifically within the bird family. Uh, that's the only group that shows evidence of having a fossilized syrinx. So that's also a correction from my last video. Uh, if you remember, I said that we don't have any kind of like fossilized vocal cords or anything like that. That's not 100% true. We do have fossilized uh, syrinxes, but it's only in birds. That's very important to understand. We also have a lot of modern day birds that don't have a syrinx, and those sounds might actually be similar to what dinosaurs sound like, but we don't know for sure. Um, birds are, of course, dinosaurs. They're just the only ones that survived. Um, and the ones that don't have a syrinx, they almost make like hissing sounds like these throaty hisses. In a way, there are two different kinds of sounds that uh, an animal can make. There are bodily sounds, which can be something like um, hissing, that's just blowing air out of your mouth really fast. Um, there are sounds like what crickets do when they rub their legs together, that's a bodily sound. There's what elephants do with their trunks. Um, which also have a larynx and can do other sounds. Uh, so that's an animal that has both bodily sounds and uh, vocal sounds, which is the other kind of sound an animal can make, uh, vocal sounds, which are produced by a vocal organ, like an organ that is specifically adapted to making sounds. Uh, larynx, syrinx, those are what make sounds. Uh, everything else, uh, involved in that is a sound amplification device. So uh, birds that don't have a syrinx are probably a lot more similar to what real dinosaurs would have sounded like. Um, but that's not, those aren't the birds that Studio Mod used in his video. He used birds that have a syrinx. He used like penguin. He used a loon that has a syrinx. Pretty sure he used an African goose for uh, the Utah raptor. Uh, like, all of these animals have a syrinx. And like I said, like the freaking the, the T-Rex has a hippo sound in it. That's a mammal. That's a mammal with a larynx. So one thing I noticed in the comments is that a lot of people, um, well, not a lot, a few people, thought that I was being critical of, you know, speculation or like these like hypotheticals. Um, and like, I'm all, I, I have no disagreements with being speculative or having, you know, your own interpretation of things. Uh, my issue is with how uh, the sounds were kind of presented as scientifically accurate when they're not. Um, and I have issue with how, um, like a lot of the people that like came to this guy's defense, which is okay, you can do that. Uh, that opens up discussion. Um, they didn't actually do the research into like what, like the issues are, like the exceptions. So a lot of people brought up uh, Parasaurolophus. This was the uh, famous hadrosaur that had the crests on its head and on the inside of the crest there's different hollow points that would have allowed air to flow through and it's pretty much 100% accepted in paleontology that this would have 
been used as sort of a sound amplification device. But that's, so here's where the, the misinterpretation comes in. We don't know what Parasaurolophus actually sounded like because the crest of Parasaurolophus is not a sound producing organ like a syrinx or a larynx. It's a sound amplification device or a sound amplification body part, I should say. Uh, this is very similar to like how an elephant's trunk works. Uh, an elephant will like say squeeze uh, or constrict certain parts of the trunk to make certain sounds uh, like that trumpeting. Um, and there's also uh, examples of this within uh, reptiles uh, and amphibians, if, of course, frogs. That's their whole throat pouch thing. That's what they. That's how they produce sounds. They push air into there and that creates vibrations. Basically, Parasaurolophus had a sound amplifying crest, but we don't know exactly what the sound was because we don't know how it was, like how it was making noise, how what, what sound was being amplified. We don't know that yet. Uh, it could have been just, if it was just air, getting blown through, it might have sounded something like a goose or like a lot of uh, the um, interpretations of it kind of sounding like almost uh, a horn almost. It could have been like that, but it could, could have also been like a, just a louder version of like a crocodile. We don't know. We have no idea. Um, and it's, I don't, it's not a good idea to like apply such like a level of certainty that we must know exactly what this animal sounded like because we know that it could amplify sound. It doesn't make any sense. Like, uh, but anyway, let's move on from that point. So to, re uh, to go back to my original video, the reason why I did it in the first place was because I realized that the sounds in the video were real animal sounds. I recognized the sounds. So I did my research. I looked for the real sounds online and they were matches. Uh, T-Rex was a mix of emperor, penguin, and a hippo. Um, it's blatantly obvious, like look up the hippo sound, uh, just bring down the tempo or bring down the pitch and it sounds exactly like the studio mod T-Rex. Um, if you look up a loon and you bring down the pitch, it will sound just like the studio mod Spinosaurus. Uh, but like, I, like just recently, I went into the video again and I looked for more examples. The Triceratops is literally just an alligator and it's an app, like you can hear the water at some points. Like it's, it's so, like it was barely changed too. It was maybe just a bit louder. Um, and that bothers me, like it's, that was maybe like even like partly one of the more realistic ones because like like a crocodile doesn't have a searing so it was just producing the sound with like a rumble like internal rumbling uh so that's probably a little bit more accurate but it's like why would you use basically just the exact same sound as an alligator why wouldn't you change it more so just to finish this video off um once again i'm not accusing studio mod of trying to trick people i think that uh what he was trying to do was just creative and he believed that it was scientifically accurate um like i don't have any issues with um his creation of the sounds or or and i'm you know it's fine that he's found success with that the issue is how people have reacted to it and how um i feel he hasn't done enough to correct it um and that's probably just something he hasn't noticed like it's probably not something he purposely did um that's that's the only reason why i wanted to do this i just wanted to put kind of the opposing information out there just kind of like get it in most people's heads you know like like it's fine if you like the sounds it's fine if you think they're realistic um but you need to stop saying that they're real you know you need to stop saying that these are like 100 percent real sounds you need to stop like replacing um or like editing like prehistoric planet clips and putting in uh the studio mod dinosaur sounds to make it more real it's 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 very silly um 
there is nothing more realistic about studio mod sounds than uh, what Jurassic Park did or what um, Prehistoric Planet has done. Like, it's, like, really anything goes here. I don't, like, I don't think that, um, like, one creator, like, stands above all else in creating dinosaur sounds. Like, the original reason why he did this, too, was to create a more sophisticated um, version of the T-Rex sound from the one that was originally created before he did the video. Doing kind of a, almost like a, um, he wanted a better version of the T-Rex sound. Um, and it's, you know, it's my opinion that what he create with a sound that he made, while it sounds cool, it is not more sophist sophisticated than the other sound. Um, it is not more accurate than the other sound. I think that both sounds are probably equally speculative and equally accurate or inaccurate. Like, we don't know. Um, in fact, I would say probably the original sound, which I'll admit is probably a lot more boring. Uh, it is probably more realistic because the sounds that she used were from animals that didn't have a vocal organ, a bittern and a crocodile, you know? Or an alligator, I should say. Um, so yeah, I don't think um, studio mod sounds are scientifically accurate. They're cool. It's fine if you think they're cool, but they're not scientifically accurate. Okay. Um, all of the sounds that he used are just are clearly just he clearly just pick and chose them because he liked the sounds or he thought that it fit the animal very well. Uh, that's all I can see here. Like, he clearly picked an alligator for Triceratops because Triceratops is a more reptilian-looking dinosaur. Uh, he clearly picked, um, the loon for the Spinosaurus because both animals live in the water and they have a kind of similar shape. Um, like, the, it's clear that's, like, what the reason was for why he picked these sounds. It wasn't for any scientific reason. It was just because he liked the sounds, which is no different from any other sound design. Like, sound designers for, like, movies, that's what they do. They find sounds that sound cool, and then they use it, you know? Um, so, yeah, that's all I wanted to say. I don't think I'll be making another one on this unless I want to do maybe, like, a reaction on some of his other um, videos. Uh, like, he does specific periods or specific animal groups, things like that. So I might do that in the future. Uh, just to go more into detail if I have to, but yeah, that's where I wanted to end this. Anyway, bye-bye. Have a good day.